simple harmonic motion. So before we study simple harmonic motion, there are important uh, concepts that we should be familiar with. And that is, one of them is Hooke's Law. Okay? So it states that the resulting force is proportional to the spring constant times the displacement. Alright, it's given by this formula. However, if we analyze that this is a spring, alright, and there is an object uh, right at the end of the spring, and you try to pull this one, alright, so this it will be a displacement. Alright, it will be displaced on its original position. And when you release it, alright, okay, so it will stop, alright. And uh, okay, so therefore the force is greater, however, the direction of the force acting on that object is um, on the opposite direction, which is the direction of the statement is going that way, however, the force is going that way, okay, and when the object comes back, it will try to restore the object going to its initial position again, so the displacement reverse. And so we have the formula. We have say, and uh, we can say that the restoring force is opposite the displacement. Alright, so there is a negative sign there. So the formula becomes positive. And when you check the slope of this um, force in the graph, it is a linear graph where in k, negative k is a slope. That's why it falls from left to right. Yeah, so this one is the slope. So also we need the Newton's law wherein uh, it states that the uh, force related to an object is proportional to um, the mass and acceleration. And an acceleration that an object has is proportional to the force applied to it and twice more. So we're going to relate the two laws. So we put this equation here. So we find negative kx over there. And uh, we can calculate for the acceleration. So that is negative kx over m. So we are going to use the constant from circular motion, especially the acceleration. In the acceleration, so the principal acceleration is given by b squared over r, and b squared is equivalent to the um, uh, the velocity of the object moving along the edge of the circle. Alright, and r is the radius. This is also equivalent to the angular velocity squared over oh no times that angular velocity is shared by the radius or radius, no radius, not the r alright, so I have the pendulum over here and it is swinging okay, back and forth alright, and there is an angle point alright, so that angle is theta and we know that at a specific point in time so the displacement here um, from the original position is given by the x component and the displacement in the y component is given by this one and it's related to the angle. However, the well, the particle or the metal on the end of the pendulum has its yes, velocity okay, and then it has its acceleration and we are concerned with that in a simple harmonic motion all right so since this is an example of simple harmonic motion although it has a different uh, set of formula which we are going to explore later and um, we all know that we should know that it has its velocity acceleration it has its displacement all right Alright, so we are going to relate the Hooke's law, simple harmonic motion, with the Newton's law, to the circular motion. And uh, we are going to um, 
solve or derive with the equation of the simplest active for harmonic motion. And then, um, notice that I have a diagram here where I have an ideal swing, alright, hoops swing, <laughs> alright, that follows the hoops law, alright, and I have the equation for the force given by the spin, which is equivalent to negative kx, and I have the mass over here. Now, you know that if I stretch the mass, alright, so it generates a force proportional to negative kx, alright, I have a graph y is negative, alright, so when you reduce it, it will start moving back and forth, okay. So the direction of motion is given by the arrow, so moving back and forth, going to, or from the origin to the passive A, and from the passive A going to the origin and then going to the negative A and then back and forth, provided that my uh, surface here is frictionless, alright. So if I put a light over here, it will cast a shadow, uh, it will uh, hit the box and the, the box will cut the shadow along the edge of the circle so so as with the um axis here okay so if the box is somewhere here all right at the later time t okay because you stretch it and now it's moving so it will cut the shadow here and so as uh, in this position okay. now we are going to map the motion of this object along the edge of the circle and along this axis. Okay. So if the path is moving, so it will cut a shadow here, 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 and here, 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 here. Simultaneously it's doing that on the x-axis. So see there is a movement of uh, that particle from that position and then yeah, so when it's coming back, it throws it in the other part of the circle, so it will cut a shadow somewhere here, and going back to the first position. Now there is a circular motion going on, okay, and there is a change in the displacement in the x axis, which we are interested in. Okay, the question is, how do we um, get those quantities or entities? So I draw a radius vector here, so this is the radius, like the radius vector, you will know later, okay? And from there, you will see that there is an angle formed with respect to the okay, x axis, okay? Let us uh, use this x axis, okay? As an x axis. So the only problem when I use x, uh, uh, this, why I uh, why use a, instead of x is that x is here and you will be confused all right but if you're um if you're not confused let's let x be the displacement okay so this can be calculated using the cosine uh, function of this angle so the cosine function is x all right over the hypotenuse or the r radius vector r so we use the radius vector r Okay, and that is x, alright, so it's a vector, then it's a displacement, so you can put an arrow over there, so x plus theta, so, um, oh, it's the other way around, so, yeah, x, yeah, displacement over r, okay, so you just make it like, then you get this. So from the concept of the circular motion, actually this R is this one and also equivalent to the centripetal uh, acceleration. The acceleration is directed in Y, okay, the circle. So we will see that effect when we are trying to calculate for the um, acceleration of the particle in this position and in this position. Okay. So for now, um, we are just interested with the displacement. Okay. So this R is also proportional to the amplitude okay, or 
this distance 0 or origin to 8 so we can change r to 8 so we have a cosine theta and now we redraw the circle all right so to monitor the velocity of the particle along the edge okay, of the circle it has its tangential velocity all right so which is given by we name this particle or shadow at q so we have bc over here and uh, accordingly this is theta so for you to find a uh, trigonometric rules if this is theta you will see and it can be proven that this one is also equivalent to the value of theta and how do we find now the x component which is parallel to the x of t alright so um, as you can see uh, there is no uh, relationship easy relationship to, to find this uh, um, thing okay all right so why and if you can see there if you can see there um there is a 90 degree form yeah so uh, in at this corner and theta is in between so um that means to say we have 90 minus um, theta so we have from the trigonometric identity of complementary angles we have cos theta okay we have put it in the parentheses 90 minus theta is equivalent to um, sine theta okay. Okay. so cos 90 is 0 okay. you can uh, you can uh, try to uh, do it in your calculator so cos 90 if you're gonna distribute this cos 90 degrees minus cos theta all right so there you go and this is equivalent to sine theta all right so making theta a positive okay i'm going to erase this multiply both sides by negative 1 okay so we have cos theta is equivalent to negative sine theta and uh, when we do that we will arrive at this um, equation so negative sine theta is equal to dx which is this one okay and we now cross multiply so we have dq okay velocity the tangential velocity over here sine theta all right so that's negative so that is your velocity in the x axis so and if you're not convinced with that kind of explanation we are going to use derivatives so i've uh, uh, i've taken um the displacement okay which has a value of a cosine theta Okay, so it says that dx over dq or the change in displacement per unit time gives us the velocity. Okay, and that requires us to taking the derivative of a trigonometric function cosine theta. And the derivative of this is simply negative a okay, sine theta. Alright, so if that a is equivalent to okay the the radius vector r and consequently equivalent to this one so this one will become um yeah the velocity sine theta so the same process is done for the acceleration okay you just have to change this okay let's see here we are I actually redrawn it here so this particle has an acceleration which is directed towards the center all right so and uh, this particle here or shadow of the particle is moving in the x direction as the box moves that way all right so we are interested with uh, ax okay so acceleration in the x axis so um 
we can actually use the trigonometric function again to prove that. However, uh, it's much easier to use calculus. Okay? So, um, so that is the dv over dt, okay, change in velocity per unit time is equivalent to acceleration. So, we, we uh, try to compute for ax, okay, so that's the component, okay, and bx, alright, is equivalent to dq sine theta. Okay, dq sine theta. So we have to get the derivative of this. So d over dt. Okay, so derivative of sine theta again negative. Okay, so there's a negative sign there. Um, so that is simply sine x. Okay, the derivative of sine x is cos x. Alright, so um, we get negative so negative sign does not change uh, vq derivative of sine theta is cos theta all right so that is your acceleration in the uh, x plus t okay so it seems that the formula that we need is complete okay if you do not if you're not satisfied with the, the the derivation of this from calculus you can do the things that i have done using the um, complementary angle formula to show that uh, um, yeah the acceleration is equal to this using the diagram the vector diagram okay and if you have any other things that you know how to be like this well you can help me by typing your comments or typing your suggestions on how I can or how we can solve this and so that we can share it to our viewers Okay, so in that portion is partly done, okay, but that's not all. Okay. And uh, we just have to connect the acceleration uh, and velocity and displacement to the quality of the moving object or that makes the moving object, which is the spring. 